Welcome back. Thank you for joining us for this last segment of the um, International Wealth Builders Radio Talk Show. I am your host, Michelle Estelle, the home buyer coach. And we spent this show talking about the loan level price adjustments, the myths behind um, getting a better rate if you have bad credit, and explaining actually what loan level price adjustments are and what actually occurred uh, with the changes this time. Um, again, to summarize, the loan level price adjustments have always been there. Um, they've changed over time before. Uh, this time, uh, low credit score borrowers with low down payment um, got an improvement, whereas the middle sector with um, good to good credit to very good credit and maybe slightly larger down payment um, pay more. So there's no argument that they actually pay more, which appears to be the subsidy for the lower income, or I'm sorry, lower credit score, lower down payment borrowers. But as I mentioned in the last segment, the big part that a lot of people didn't talk about was that if you do have low income, you have all of the loan level price adjustments waived. And that would be in any of those sectors. If you're in the low income, the loan level price adjustments would be wiped out, waived, uh, brought to zero. Um, so a good credit borrower could also benefit from, from that if they're low income. So that though is the biggest adjustment. Um, we also talked about the fact if you put more down, you actually could pay a higher interest rate and why that is, that's because of mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance goes away after 20% down, but the cost of uh, taking back a property through the foreclosure um, proceeding does cost the lender money. So without that insurance, um, they do pay those costs out of pocket. Um, so I do want to thank you for joining us today. Um, we are on KCAA Broadcasting Network. We are on 1050 AM and 106.5 FM. And if you've missed any of our previous shows, you can watch us on the TV streaming channel distribution, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Android apps. Just subscribe to the Building Solid Foundation channel to watch all of the previous shows. Some great information there. Next show, uh, we have not announced the topic yet, but that will be coming soon. And I just want to thank you for joining us and um, listening to all the great education provided on this network. Um, if there's anything that you're not getting um, and questions that you want answered, just reach out to me. I am Michelle Estelle your home buyer coach and my phone number is 909-229-1730. Um, last month's show, we talked about um, generational wealth and I kind of was sharing my thoughts about how uh, there's no guarantees in either situation, meaning if you come from a family that doesn't have much or if you come from a family that does have much, that there's no guarantee that the outcome will be that that wealth will continue to the down generations. And there was one thing that I did mention or did not mention that I thought about afterwards, and that's the number of um, siblings, number of people in the household. This is also something that I thought about that makes a big difference because if you are an only child and your parents leave you everything, um, Obviously, that's that's a good uh, lift for your life, um, depending on how old you are, as I mentioned. But you also um, are the sole heir. And so if your parents do leave you everything, then you get everything. But if you do have multiple siblings, um, all of their estate is divided up. And so if they had you when they were young, which was one factor we talked about, if you have multiple siblings and if they've, uh, if your parents have um, went through some tough times and so on and don't have a lot left in their estate at the time of their passing or they needed long-term care afterwards and you add the siblings um, to that scenario and you're already old when your parents die, um, there's just really no scenario that guarantees that just because your parents had wealth or just because your parents owned a home that you will also have a benefit from their wealth. Most all wealth, um, at least I can use in the middle sector, most all wealth is um, something that your each generation is going to have to 
work for and save for their self, which is why uh, financial education and passing on information responsibility to your kids is so important. Um, I am very passionate about that because uh, we are continually told that families don't talk about money or teach their kids about money. And we don't teach it in schools, which is the number one thing that we should be teaching people young people about debt, about savings, about cost, about budgets, and uh, kind of um, delaying the gratification in purchasing things right away or buying a car cash that's used or buying the smaller house first and moving up at, or saving up money at a small rate for a long period of time to get something that you really want. Those are the things that we definitely should be sharing with our younger generation and teaching them a better responsibility with money um, because we're not doing a very good job at that right now. And we're too caught up in other things instead of teaching basic skills and money is a huge part of skill set that we need for our young people. So I thank you for joining us again. Uh, this is the International Wealth Builders Radio Talk Show. I am your host, Michelle Estelle, and I am the homebuyer coach.